Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon, and today on the show... We're going to be taking a look at the history and origins of the Ghostbusters' Peter Rankman. With no evidence to the contrary, other than in the real Ghostbusters, where he mentions a number of times as being a Scorpio, which would place his birthday between October 23rd and November 21st, for the purposes of this video, I'll be using Bill Murray's actual birthday as that of Peter Venkman's, which is September 21st, 1950. This puts Dr. Venkman at the age of 33 during the events of the first Ghostbusters movie and 39 during the events of the second film. In every incarnation of the franchise, Peter is portrayed as a womanizer who's lazy and cynical with a dry sense of humor, but is more aggressive when busting ghosts. He holds PhDs, also known as Doctor of Philosophy degrees, in both psychology and parapsychology. During the events of Ghostbusters 2, Peter was the host of a parapsychology show called World of the Psychic in which he filmed 33 episodes of before quitting due to having enough of dealing with nutcases and getting urinated on by the hairless cat he held up during the film. Peter met Ray during their freshman year of college, having enrolled in an esoteric literature course together. According to a deleted scene in the first film, Peter introduced Egon and Ray to each other, and when the two conversed about the possibilities of earning awards, Peter made proclamation that he too should receive the awards due to introducing the two. Just before the events of the first film, Bankman met with the Board of Trustees for Columbia University in order to secure funding for the team's research, but ultimately was the cause of Ray Egon and himself being terminated by the university. According to the novelization of Ghostbusters 2, Venkman's senior class in high school voted him most likely to become a game show host. During the animated series The Real Ghostbusters, we learn about Venkman's dad, the con artist who could not make an honest dollar and was often away on business during Peter's childhood. Also, according to the animated series, one of Peter's hobbies is that of trains, and often dreamt of being a conductor for the railroad as a kid. In the finale of Extreme Ghostbusters, after the closing down of the original Ghostbusters, Peter went to Hollywood and tried to sell an idea for a Ghostbusters movie, but never got it going because he was waiting for Brad Pitt to become available to portray him. Currently in canon, Peter has only had two serious love interests, that of Dana Barrett in both Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2, which was eventually elaborated on in the idea W Ghostbusters story Mass Hysteria 1 and 2, it's revealed the two split up for the second time due to paparazzi descending upon them after each ghost bust. However, anytime Dana is in trouble, he shows he truly does love her over even himself by dropping everything and rushing to her aid without even thinking. Then, in Ghostbusters the video game, he developed an interest in Lissa Selwyn, whom, similar to Dana, didn't really have an interest in him until the end when the two shared a kiss just before Lissa was slimed by the onion-headed ghost known as Slimer. It was revealed in one of the IDW Ghostbusters comics. The reason Peter doesn't tuck the legs of his jumpsuit into his boots is because he tried it once and thought he looked foolish. In another story from IDW, it's revealed that Peter has a complete lack of fear. During the events of Ghostbusters Get Real, when the main universe's Ghostbusters meet their real Ghostbuster counterparts, it's seen that Peter can't even stand himself. With both Peters having the same obnoxious attitude, the main universe Peter told the other Busters that he felt like punching his alternate universe counterpart. It's mentioned in multiple comics that Peter wrote a paper on the theory of werewolf gladiators in Atlantis as part of his parapsychology doctorate which he obtained as an easy second PhD. In the original Ghostbusters film, Peter was intended to be played by John Belushi. However, Belushi died of a drug overdose before the film's pre-production. Slimer was described by Aykroyd as the ghost of John Belushi. After Belushi's death and before Bill Murray was attached to the role, Michael Keaton and Chevy Chase were linked to the role of Peter. I'd actually like to kind of see a Michael Keaton Peter Vane. That could be interesting. According to the novelization, Peter put himself through college working as a hawker at Coney Island where he honed his skills in fast talking. In Ghostbusters, the supernatural spectacular, Peter entered the study of parapsychology because grant money was readily available and the study of ESP was in its infant stage and thus results could be made up. Peter was a carnival barker during his summers away from college. Peter was born on the lot of King City Attractions in a tent on a field in Sedalia, Missouri. He went to school in Iowa City, but the family circus toured through the Corn Belt states. He wanted to go to college, but he couldn't state why to his father. In the October 7th, 1983 script, it was noted Peter was an associate professor. So there you have it guys, the history and origins of the Ghostbusters' Peter Venkman. 
Stay tuned next time when we do the history and origins of the heart of the Ghostbusters, Ray Stance. Take care, geeks. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks. <laughs>